All right. Well, uh, good morning and welcome to the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, I'm extremely pleased to be here today with uh, Mark Sarangelo from Sierra Nevada Corporation and uh, our administrator, Charlie Bolden, as we uh, enter into this Space Act agreement with Sierra Nevada uh, that's going to continue to move us forward in enabling commercial space operations here at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, this agreement gives Sierra Nevada uh, access to KSC's unique facilities in uh, our over 50 years of engineering experience in the processing, launch, and recovery of uh, spacecraft. Uh, it's another viable measure of our commitment to achieving safe, reliable, and cost-effective access to low Earth orbit and the International Space Station and to bringing future jobs back here to the Space Coast. Uh, by enabling commercial space operations, we are going to transform human spaceflight for future generations, reduce our reliance on foreign systems, and uh, free NASA's limited resources to do the really hard things, like exploring beyond our home planet. So uh, today, we commemorate a, a new relationship as we at KSC recommit ourselves to taking the necessary steps to ensure America's preeminence in uh, human spaceflight for many years to come. So thanks for being here. Charlie? Yeah, thanks very much, Bob. And, and uh, Mark, thanks very much for allowing me to sit in on this, on this great ceremony. It's a pleasure for me to be here because uh, I don't ordinarily get a chance to be on this side of the podium. But uh, <laughs> this is I, on purpose. Uh, this is, uh, I think all of you have to understand, this is a really great step toward a bright future for us. And you've been hearing us talk about things like this as we've gone through this entire week, and you'll continue to hear it. Uh, Sierra Nevada is, um, they're already demonstrated an incredible ingenuity and resourcefulness because of their participation in our commercial crew development program. Um, and, and you will be seeing more and hearing more from them as the days go by. It's a very important partnership for us. Uh, they have agreements not only with the Kennedy Space Center, but now with other NASA centers around the country, JSC, Langley, Dryden, and Ames. And this demonstrates their multifaceted approach to human exploration and their commitment to utilizing the full resources of NASA. Uh, Mark and, and the rest of us were talking beforehand about uh, stealing the synergy between NASA and our years of expertise. Mark and his folk, a lot of young people, uh, I understand, uh, their vision and their excitement. So the team, I think, will be incredible. We can't do everything. Government uh, cannot do everything. I think you all know these are really, really tough fiscal times. One of the reasons for deciding that we were going to phase the shuttle out was to get NASA out of the business of building and operating uh, a $2 billion a year enterprise. And so that's where Mark and his folk come in. Uh, we're really excited about working with them. Sierra Nevada is a great example of what private industry uh, can do in filling this need. It's work like theirs that leverages the private investment and reduces the development costs for us and for the taxpayer as we develop commercial systems that can safely and reliably transport humans to low Earth orbit. The future of hum human spaceflight is bright. You'll hear me say that over and over and over again, so you need to print it, okay? I'm going to keep <laughs> saying it until you print it. The, the future of human spaceflight is incredible. Uh, you're witnessing the first steps that NASA's taken to create that, that future right now. So thanks very much for all of you coming out. And thanks, Mark, for you and Bob for letting me sit in on this. Thanks, Charlie. Mark? Well, I want to do first thank you both for, for giving us this opportunity. It's an extraordinary moment to be able to utilize all the major elements that exist in NASA and all the heritage and, and terrific people. And uh, before I begin, I'd like to introduce uh, members of my senior team behind me, Jim Voss, Mary Sanchez, and John Curry all of whom have had uh, well over 20 years experience at NASA and it's part of the philosophy that we're trying to develop here is that while we are a commercial space company and we're proud to be partnered with NASA the approach that we're taking here is one of a hybrid approach we want to take the best of what NASA offers the heritage behind NASA the the terrific people who have been involved with the program uh, our vehicle which you see here on the, as a model to my left was based on a program that NASA had for many years it's called the HL20 program uh, ten years worth of heritage and work went into that design and we're taking that heritage from NASA and its people and its systems and its and its programs and blending it in with commercial activities commercial practices our company we've been around for a long time we've been on well over 400 space missions we know how difficult it is to be in space and the program has been existing now for us uh, we're going into our seventh year of development for it so it's not something that's just beginning it's 
we really benefited terrifically from our relationship with NASA. And now with this next step, we're reaching out to, to the NASA centers and going directly to them. And, and Bob and his team have been super supportive of us in, in terms of beginning to uh, develop how can we utilize the, the, the resources that exist here, the wonderful facilities, the terrific people, and really make that bring our program to the next level. We've been uh, very, very pleased. And Charlie, I also, we've been terrifically happy with the with the whole approach of, of the Space Act agreements and, and the whole CCDEV program. The resources that have been applied to the program from the NASA folks have really moved us forward very well. And as, as you know, we, we finished our first two milestones just uh, in, uh, in the last month, and we're very pleased with that work, too. So thank you very much. And uh, I guess before we sign, I should uh, introduce a few other folks up here. Frank DeBello from Space Florida just joined us. Frank's been instrumental in all our uh, agreements down here, helping bring work back to the uh, Space Coast. And uh, Joyce Rakelmi is the head of my uh, Center Planning and Development Office that works all these agreements for me, and uh, it's no easy task. Uh, and in the middle there, Janet Petro, the deputy here at uh, KSC. And Janet brings a, a wealth of uh, private experience uh, to the Kennedy Space Center, not having grown up her entire time here. And she's been instrumental in helping make all of this work, too. So I think uh, between us, we've got a great team working forward to uh, make this all happen. We're going to go fly together. Absolutely. Let's sign an agreement. All right. <laughs> and we're going to fly out of <laughs> I think we do have time for just a couple questions, if you guys would raise your hands. We'll start with Seth Bornstein. Only if Charlie and Mark get all the hard ones. <laughs> Thank you. Seth Bornstein, AP. Uh, for Charlie, uh, the House uh, uh, Probes Committee is looking uh, past a uh, approved a budget that would cut $300 million out of uh, exploration and other uh, nearly 300 million out of space ops and uh, way close to 2 billion total from your budget what would this do to your uh, to NASA's space exploration plans um, and and in general to NASA I mean a lot of it's out of space science yeah. if this budget goes through the way it is what will NASA look like and how will it delay your uh, going somewhere eventually. Seth, I think all of you have had an opportunity to see the President's 2012 budget proposal, and that's what we work on. That's what our planning is based on. Um, and it gave us a very, you know, what I would consider a very good program, balanced program, to capture the, the essential elements of the 2010 Authorization Act as confirmed by the, uh, the appropriations, the full year CR appropriations. I have to remind everybody that was joint, I mean an overwhelming joint vote of the Congress signed into law by the President. So that's what we're working on now with all of our planning. Uh, the big things we're doing like signing this agreement today, uh, we're really pushing for uh, a robust commercial uh, space industry to, to relieve us of, the, of the, the responsibility for paying for uh, access to low Earth orbit. And that gonna, is going to give us an opportunity to focus on exploration with a deep space exploration crew vehicle, a heavy lift launch vehicle, and our science program and aeronautics that we have. It goes without saying that if, in fact, uh, you know, we were to find that, that we, we did get cuts as deep as you've seen in the House, it will slow things down. So, you know, everybody talks about wanting to decrease the gap between the end of the shuttle era and the beginning of a commercial, a viable commercial capability of doing what we know how to do or going to explore. If you give us less money, it's going to widen the gap. It's going to slow our march toward what, uh, you know, where we know the nation needs to go. Okay, Ken Kramer. Hi, Ken Kramer for Space Flight Magazine. I think probably for everybody, really. When, when do you foresee launching this uh, uh, H, um, HL-20 Dream Chaser? Thanks. We are, uh, thank you for that. We are in the midst of our first um, build of the first vehicle right now. It's under construction. 
Uh, we're expecting to be doing our first um, drop test next year in 2012, and we'll be doing the first uh, suborbital flights in the following year in two 2013, and be doing conducting our first orbital test in 2014 with service in 2015. Okay, Todd Halverson at Florida Today. Uh, Todd Halverson of Florida Today for Mr. Sir Angelo. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your concept of operations for this vehicle, um, what you'll be launching on, where you'll be launching, where you'll be landing, and, and where you'll home port your fleet. I will. Thank you. And uh, we, we like Florida, so this is a, there's going to be a lot of Florida in our plans. Uh, the concept of operations is that we're launching from here, and we'll be launching on a, an Atlas V, a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. And the, the uh, vehicle will be based out of Florida and will be uh, conducting its post-flight processing here. Hi. Curtis Kruger, St. <laughs> Petersburg Times for, Secret for Administrator Bolden. I think the public understands well that the space shuttle program is ending, but has a less uh, detailed understanding of what comes after. How would you sum up for human spaceflight what comes after both for NASA and for commercial operators? Uh, my answer would be uh, we are continuing human spaceflight in the same vein that we've been doing for the last 10 years. I, I, I have to remind everybody we should all be very proud of an incredible program called the International Space Station. Bob flew, I want to say if it wasn't the first assembly, assembly mission, yeah. Uh, Bob Cabana flew the first assembly mission that started this whole thing more than 10 years ago. And since, that, since they opened business, opened the International Space Station for business, we have had re continuously, without absence, humans in low Earth orbit, generally for six month periods of time. That is going to continue through at least 2020 and maybe even beyond. The, the International Space Station now, it's the heart and soul of our exploration effort. It's the place away from Earth's gravity where we can do human, uh, human research, we can do uh, technology development, we can do lots of things that many people never thought of before. We're looking at, at ways to enhance the utilization of the International Space Station. But what's most important is Americans are going to be in space uh, for time, for the foreseeable future. Uh, we're working with folk like Mark and his company and others to see if we can't bring about a domestic capability to get our astronauts to orbit uh, as soon as possible. And I'll go back to the question asked. Uh, it's really critical for us to come together, we in the administration and the Congress, to give us the funds necessary for a, a robust, viable, speedy uh, development of a, of a viable commercial space industry so that we can get on with the business of, of sending humans to the International Space Station with an American capability. Okay, Dan Billow. Uh, Dan Billow for WESH-TV for Mr. Sarangelo. Could you give us some specifics on, on the agreement? What work is, is being done here at what facilities and how many people would be hired or employed doing the work? Um, certainly we can talk about the, the, the purposes of the agreement. We're still working out the details as to what, via, what buildings and exactly uh, what the work will be done, but essentially what we'll be doing is working together with, with Bob and his team, and uh, I should mention also Frank DiBello in Space Florida, who's been very, very helpful in, in orchestrating us coming down here. The idea here is that we started actually today on the processes of determining what, what uh, uh, buildings we will be using, what teams we'll be working with. But the vehicle, as you can see, is, uh, bears a, a striking resemblance to the shuttle. So many of the same processes, many of the same talents and, and techniques that are being used for the shuttle work or, or things that we'll be working on. So we don't have the details as to exactly uh, which buildings, but that process started today and will be concluding in the next, uh, next few months. Front row here, we got several. Uh, Jim Siegel, Celebration Independent Newspaper. Just j jumping off on what you just said, Mark. Uh, some people might look at this vehicle, a Dream Chaser, as a, uh, a, a more sleek-looking shuttle but without a large cargo bay. How would you characterize that vehicle? You know, I like the word sleek. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that works fine. You can print that one. Uh, we, uh, we view it that there, there was a lot of very fine engineering that went into the shuttle design. There was a purpose for it, and we, we feel that many of the reasons for that, for that design can carry forward into the next generation of what we're doing in space. The idea of being able to land on a runway, to be able to bring back cargo uh, and bring back cargo and create